I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Bless all of us who are worshiping with us for the first time. Please pick up your notes. Let's get to the word we have a lot to do tonight. The word of God comes to build us, to grant us spiritual realities and to activate possibilities in our lives. I continue to pray that we all cultivate a passion for the word of God. The word of God is a blessing. The word of God is not a burden and the understanding of it is the secret behind the exploits of great men praise the lord i took out time to pray over tonight's teaching because i believe with all my heart that um, it will help us in no small way and it will build us i remain committed to teaching us the truths that will strategically build us first in the knowledge of the Lord and then to cause our experience on this earth spiritually and in all wise to be efficient praise the Lord and so this is one of those teachings tonight it's a very personal teaching to me um, and I pray in Jesus name that will place value on it in Jesus name If you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, then you will be able to maximize the prophetic word for the year to be fruitful, to multiply, and that your life becomes a representation of the possibilities that are resident within the Christ. Is it too much if we pray again for an opening of our understanding please lift your voice and pray never get tired of crying before the lord hallelujah praise the Lord growth systems growth systems tonight I'm sharing with us the Word of God kingdom strategies for unstoppable growth first in our spiritual lives and then over every other aspect of our lives growth systems it is God's desire from his word that believers excel it's God's desire that we be fruitful it's God's desire that we experience the fullness of the life of Christ um, but knowing knowing God's desire is not enough we must sustain the requisite knowledge and understanding to make the truths a reality in our lives and so i want to go straight to the point there is a lot to teach and i want us to also pray hallelujah there are systems allocated in the kingdom you you will notice that um, many times i teach you on methodologies systems the reason is because that is how God's design is. God is a God of systems. 
God is systemic in his approach. The moment you encounter his person, then you have to learn of his ways, his methodology, the way he operates. This camera that this gentleman is using operates based on a system. And if you do not know how to use the camera, even if you are given the camera, it is useless. The Zoe life that is given is activated through understanding. We've taught it again and again. And so I'm going to be sharing with us very unstoppable principles. Let, let me say this maybe. Please, I want you to believe the truths that you are taught in this place. I want you to trust the validity of the spiritual information that you are given in this place. You are not being taught cunningly devised fables. And just because not every part of the teaching may be reflecting its result yet in your life, it doesn't mean it is not truth. Are we together? Let me tell you sincerely, you will spend the rest of your life in thanksgiving when you see the fruit of these truths that you learn begin to unfold. I told you that it is the pursuit and the knowledge of God that is infinite. The principles that make for the excelling of the saints on earth is finite. There is an exact body of spiritual knowledge that you can hold on to as the keys to your excelling on earth it doesn't mean you stop learning it just means that you learn from a higher pedestal it took me a long time to realize that the truths that make for greatness in the kingdom are finite it was so comforting to know that you can actually exhaust that curriculum not in your lifetime within a few years so that what you are left with is exploring the christ not learning to rise to be great again if you convince yourself that you spend a lifetime learning the principles that make for your greatness then you have failed every student gets into school having an idea of the course content allocated doesn't mean he stops learning but a day can come you would have covered that body of knowledge and you are satisfied so although you are learning you are no longer learning as a, as a student or at least as an undergraduate this is what god is helping us do the second thing i want you to know is that these are not the opinions of men it will be terrible if the things that i teach you are opinions opinions fail they are largely emotional they are products of limited experiences but these are truths that are backed by God's own integrity. They have been vetted through decades and centuries. They are not just the fabrication of a man's idea. Please understand this. These truths are not Joshua Selman's idea. I didn't invent them. I was only shown. You can be a very sincere believer. You can be a very honest, well-meaning believer. But because of a fault or a default in your foundation, you will find out that all of the structures you are attempting to build cannot stand. And there are times that God does not only need to correct the structure, he needs to go back to the foundation. Are we together? And correct many things. Philosophies and belief systems that were built by sincere preachers sincere denominations men and women who love god with all their heart but were also limited in their understanding many of us come from churches we come from denominations we come from christian backgrounds and maybe other religious backgrounds and those who got us saved and began our spiritual journeys they were sincere people but they gave us what they knew to be the combination for balance and efficiency and many of us that was where our challenges started till today there are certain things you cannot receive because an information was captured in your foundation that stops that building from lying balanced or an 
insufficient information from your foundation foundations are very important very very important in luke chapter 6 we'll read a lot of scriptures luke chapter 6 we'll start from 47 to 49 jesus himself was teaching i love the teaching ministry of jesus very balanced very concise very applicable truths of the kingdom jesus himself was teaching about foundations the wisdom of men is not necessarily determined by the kind of structure but the kind of foundation jesus spoke about buildings verse 47 whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them i will show you who he is like look at the picture now he is like a man which built a house and what please talk to me look at how this man is building his foundation dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock and when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock the next verse but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man without a foundation wow he built on sand and the bible says he doesn't have foundation there was no digging there was only building the first guy dug downwards first so that he will dig up he will build upwards the second guy just saw plain land and started building on it is that not how many people were trained there was no place to dig and and create a very solid spiritual foundation and the bible says that when the storm came and beat vehemently immediately immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great foundations first kings chapter 6 i found two powerful scriptures that blessed me in no small way first kings chapter 6 and verse 37 then we'll go to verse 7 9 and 10 first kings 6 37 this is solomon the bible is giving us the 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 details of the building of the temple of solomon and the bible says in the fourth year was the foundation even the house of the lord needed foundations it says it was laid in the mount ziff solid structure the foundation was laid upon a mount not just on sand chapter 7 and 9 and 10 chapter 7 first kings chapter 7 all these still talking about the foundation all these were of costly stones according to the measures of the huge stones sword with saws within and without even from the foundation unto the coping and so on the outside towards the great court verse 10 and the foundation was of costly stones even great stones stones of 10 cubits and stones of 8 cubits this is how the foundation of the temple was built unshakable a lot was invested in that foundation because of the kind of structure that will be built foundations are very important the beauty of any christian life is not just predicated on the knowledge that you continue to add but the level the quality of spiritual foundation that you have every christian life has pillars there are spiritual convictions that represent the core of your belief system taught through mentorship taught through your personal study taught through the dimensions of encounters that you've had regardless of how it came it is important to make sure that those foundations are true are valid and are correct because you can build a structure on a faulty foundation or on no foundation at all if you got born again under a man who did not appreciate the ministry of prayer listen carefully 
it is possible that in your foundational teachings he will tell you being filled with the holy spirit is not necessary now he's not evil are we together now this is your foundation and you are told that the only thing to do is just go to church be a nice christian read your bible get a devotional and that's all right you received it sincerely and that became the reason behind the weak spirit man that you have not because you are bad not because the pastor or the mentor was bad but they come they invested their limitations upon your life and your life became a reflection of their biases and their limitations are we together someone else if you if you got born again under a very strong prayer ministry that didn't have respect and regard for the truths of the word chances were that the moment you got born again you prayed your way into the realms of visions and the prophetic and never had a need to appreciate the word the the grace to sit with the word and learn the ways of god was not there if you got born again under please permit me to use the word a a conservative legalistic spiritual structure there there will usually be no appetite to know god and encounters when you hear things like encounters you you, you know you can just say well, what do you mean encounters all i need to do is to perform the requisite sacraments that the bible demands church tithes offerings communion baptism etc and on the strength of those rituals you can convince yourself that they are equivalent to spiritual growth faulty foundations christ must be the pillar the foundation of every man do you know it's amazing that many believers they cannot exactly articulate their salvation experience they just know that they were around the things of god and eventually they migrated themselves into the system of church and that's as far as they can know that's very dangerous first corinthians chapter 3 from verse 10 first corinthians chapter 3 from verse 10 to 11 first corinthians 3 10 according to the grace of god which is given to me paul is speaking now i say what wise master builder i have laid the foundation hmm. and another build it thereon but let every man take heed how he build it 11 he said for no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid which is christ jesus it matters how you were introduced into the kingdom there are people who were introduced into the kingdom through giving not salvation giving they gave their way into christianity they never truly surrendered their life and received the life of god others were there through sitting and just listening to different teachings and they say you've been here for five years be a deacon then later be a pastor then later be a church member it's amazing how many people have routed their ways into church and into spirituality in fact others started as a switch from tradition and christianity small tradition here small christianity here and they were told based on their traditional beliefs that whether is jesus or is that deity the only difference is that they should just make sure that god is glorified and that was the template so as they are born again today they don't believe there is one god they don't believe jesus is the only person and when situations press them while jesus is sleeping they wake another one before he wakes up foundations they will find nothing offensive in mixing christianity and tradition all sorts of arrows in their house physical arrows not demonic arrows with charms and numbers and names written there are many people when you go to their houses you will see a bible you will see books on scientology you will see books on zodiac books on 
the constellation and everything and their concept of christianity listen very carefully is that god is the highest divine power just like buddha just like other gods they are transcendental masters it is just the ignorance of men that groups them into what we call religion so they say so when you come and you talk to them about jesus they say i believe in jesus and i'm, 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 I'm yes do you now believe in my own god you say no and they say oh, you, are, you are making a mistake they are all related it's like it's like it's like loving me and hating a jimmy or loving but we are all the same family and that's not true impossible there is no other name under heaven not there is no other person there is no other name no other office under heaven given to man by which men must be saved no other name the name of a pastor cannot save a man the name of a denomination cannot save a man please listen very carefully the name of a business cannot save a man prosperity cannot save a man giving does not save a man fasting does not save a man there is no other name under heaven you will think what i'm saying is very simple until you find out many people you see when you come into a house it is only good to know who the father is there are many men in that house there are those walking there are relatives any wise man will say please who is the owner of this house so that when i wake up in the morning i'm not confused on who to greet i need to know who who has the power to drive me out of this compound i can't generalize and say just because there are able-bodied men any one of them can receive the same kind of greeting no some men are gate men it's not an insult some men are chefs they are bigger than the owner but the owner is still the owner just because the owner is humble does not mean he's not the owner you receive a life that you do not know the owner you hang around a system that you do not know the owner faulty foundations usually this kind of foundation will produce a need driven christian the entire scope of your christian experience is what to get this this is you, you hear me say it and, and and i don't i don't mean to be sarcastic for many believers the only purpose of faith is to get things that's it every teaching of faith is taught as a mechanism to extract spiritual things or to convert spiritual things so all kinds of lusts and carnality emanate from that kind of aberrated foundation again remember we're not talking of good or bad people here we're talking about the opportunity to have received truth or otherwise there is no other name under heaven there are people the moment they were born again the next thing they were taught about was prosperity very destructive foundation you don't get someone born again and the next thing you are teaching is cars and houses no cars and houses and prosperity is important but there is a level of growth that is required for that teaching to now profit the person you don't teach anything to any believer at any time and say it does not matter the construction has to be systemic are we together now so you ask an average believer give me a rundown if i get born again mention the seven major doctrines i should focus on they can't tell you they will just say just give your life to christ find out your talent find out whether you are a musician if you're a musician join a prayer band join a um, um, worship team if you're a prayer warrior join this if you're a prophet hang around and be faithful serve the man of god one day you'll be around. and and you see all these kinds of things is dangerous there are people who get born again and in less than one month they have been ordained as pastors just because of the the impact of their salvation experience they started prophesying and seeing visions and the man said this is this is a potential uh, branch pastor and the next thing oil is poured on his head now he becomes a man of god and there are gaps in his knowledge is God speaking to us there are people who got born again and the next thing they had was love what did they hear love not love of God love of fellowship brethren relationship marriage How, what 
kind of a teaching is that as soon as you are born again the next thing instead of you to see god you are seeing men or women and you're already calculating 19 years you are thinking already i will have five children four children because that, i'm not pleased i'm not saying the preachers of this thing are wrong i'm just trying to arrange we're discussing growth systems are we together so instead of that individual to be pressing towards god the only thing you come for prayer you come for worship you come and you are looking around who is looking at me who is a potential uh, 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 um, suitor who is a potential you know all kinds of things and then you don't grow there are even people because of that kind of teaching they can't pray in tongues lest they not look fine because of the aggression that prayer brings so they pray with a, a level and you see that their, their spirit man is as lean as whatever They can't receive. Speak and they will not speak because they are aware. Something has been activated that had no business being activated. There are people who get born again and the next thing, pressure is put on them to produce results with their faith. Are we together now? And they don't learn that there is a law of process in spiritual growth in two weeks they want to get a car in two weeks they want to build a house in two weeks they want to start wearing suits like the men of god to prove that their faith is working and to the degree to which they bring physical results they are accredited by structures that have been set to show they are growing so many people will go so far to borrow suits borrow shoe borrow everything and bring a regalia that shows that the word is working You don't like me this night it's too early there's a lot to talk about this is just on point one it matters your spiritual foundation it matters how it was laid it matters the value you have for the world today is largely a reflection of the value the person who saved and mentored you showed you he had over the world there were people who every time you came to their office you would see them studying and it's not like you really like the word but they challenge you and you just carried your bible you know people don't buy strong concordance again people don't buy dicks ah gone are the days of dicks i mean nobody even talks dicks just find a simple clear translation and it's all right no appetite for spiritual growth your spiritual foundation is what will support you in the days that come your spiritual foundation is what will support you in the days when it looks like the word of god is not working listen carefully the bible says jesus himself speaking said the wind came the rain came on the structure and his foundation i tell you why a lot of people continue to curse god on his face lord if you are god why am i still barren if you are god why am i this why did i lose a loved one there is, I, there is no difference between loving god and not even I, I hate all of this i prayed and prayed and prayed that i will not go to the hospital but i still went lord you are not faithful something about your foundation something about god may have been wrongly taught you because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters when your foundation is solid the rains will come everything will come when it lifts you will stand stand strong and stand solid job was a man whose foundation was tested i'm not bringing a theological debate as to the basis of job's predicament but job got to a point in his life do you know what it means to lose all your children in one day comma lose all your possession in one day lose everything in one day his friends left him one friend left you you are almost dying now here is a man almost all his friends left him and then in addition to that his body was challenged with sores from head to toe and job sat down frustrated the wife frustrated the three friends came they looked at him after seven days they had a discussion and left job was left alone 
I wish I would tell you that life would never test your foundation. My precious people, I wish I would tell you that you will never have any cause to thank God for your stability. But you will. You will. People have lost loved ones and didn't know what to say. They checked their Bible from Genesis to Revelation and could not find a scripture that will help explain. What do you do when your life is a contrast of what is written? What do you do when you have exhausted your obedience and everything you know to do, yet the results refuse to change? Listen to me. I teach you the power of spiritual foundations. What do you do when the more you pray, the more you engage, it looks like darkness continues to rise? What do you do when you give all that you have and yet you do not have food to eat? What do you do when your enemies continue to excel and you keep going down? What do you do when you pray and fast and you're a man of God who loves your people with all their heart and the church continues to reduce? What do you do when you raise your children with the word of God? You teach them the ways of God and then they become teenagers and go haywire. You were not a rebel. You taught them well. You prayed for them. You laid hands on them. You fasted, but every one of them made their choice. I've chosen my life and God is not part of the choice. And society looks at you and they say, oh dear, you are a failed father. You are a failed mother. You are a failed pastor. What do you do when men cannot understand what is happening in your life? What do you do when you cannot understand what is happening in your life? Listen very carefully. I show you the way of strength. Foundations. This is where men are separated from boys. It's not the building. It's the foundation. What do you do when you have fasted again and again and again and again and again and you cannot take in? Every man of God has prayed for you. Joshua Selman prayed for you. Every man of God you honor prayed for you. Prophecies continue to come. Months become years. Years become decades. And not one child will come. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, I will never curse him with my mouth. I show you how to be solid. Many believers are weak. At everything that shakes them, they curse God, curse men of God, curse Christianity. A pastor gets ordained in ministry with the hope that he will receive 50,000 or 100,000 as support from missionaries. And something happens and he does not receive that support. After four or five years, he tells his wife, look, it was never ministry. Remember, my plan was to start a poultry. It's just that they called me and said, let me come and work for God. And now, since this salary is not coming, God, you and your scam, get out of my life. They leave God. Didn't it happen to the disciples? Jesus is gone. On the cross, they didn't hear anything again. Peter said, I go fishing. The rest say, we go with you. Let's go. Let's go back and leave this guy. When Joseph was in that prison, sitting quietly, meditating on his dream and watching the noisemakers, everybody explaining why he entered the prison. I came here because I stole. I came here because I annoyed the king. I didn't make his grape juice well and he drove me into this prison. And Joseph sits down. What happens when your innocence takes you to prison? Innocence will not always take you to the throne. Ask Mandela. It may always take you to the prison. What happens when you obeyed God and gave that house? God said, sow the house. You had God. You sowed the house and thought in two months a blessing will come. In five years, you are still roaming around squatting. And you have become a testimony. You have become an example to warn many believers. Every time they are talking about not hearing God, you are the sample they use. They say, don't be confused and don't subject yourself to divination like this man. Whereas you are there and you say, God, 
didn't you speak and that's the only time you hear him i spoke so what else oh god he doesn't see a reason to talk i've taught you that when god is silent he's speaking foundations are powerful the days that come will require men and women not just men who have results but men who have foundation if your strength is in your car your certificate your ministry koinonia joshua selman connections you will never be able to stand a point will come in your life you will find out that everything that is not jesus is like a shadow it's true it's difficult the deception of things can make you think they can stand with him a time will come when you sit down and um, you look at life from the eyes of an elder and you say in this life the only thing that matters of reading many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the soul there is no other foundation than christ i know he will bless me but what happens if he does not bless me i know he gives children but what happens if his child does not come I know he gives prosperity but what happens if i do not prosper i trusted him and i saw a vision that my uncle would not die even when my uncle died i was sleeping and i saw his spirit and i saw that he would come back to life and i came back with a group of prayer warriors you may be thinking and we prayed for him and he did not come back to life what happens when it looks like you have episodes of negative events things that negate scripture do you have the stamina to still trust god or will you get distracted and your entire life is now trusting god for answers that you get to a point where you are so matured and you say lord i'm never going to discuss these issues my love for you is bigger than them i trust you so much let's continue the training as if they are not in the midst of fire and god says what kind of brand are you You have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. Hey, you have captured my heart, consume my heart with your love. Sing it from the depth of your heart. Lord, you have captured my heart consume my heart with your love hallelujah that a time comes when all your notebooks have become full and not one of what god said has come to pass you are just writing he keeps waking you every night as if he's fulfilling everything keep writing in that book you wrote that you should have gone to your permanent site in that book you wrote that you should have had 500 members and after five ten years you still have 70 members you have gone for every conference you are not a rebel your heart is opened what happens everybody say foundation this is it the strength of your foundation while the winds blow heaven is watching let's see what happens now all of a sudden they see the prayer warrior turn to god and say lord let me tell you i really hate you take this from me make sure the angels take it to the throne room i hate you get out of my life and let me have my life back god says i love you but i respect your will you've made your choice ah but there are others with no results you say lord you say i don't have results are you not everything every other thing is an addition 
I cannot cry when I have you. Because you are everything to me. Listen, you must get to a point where this is no longer a sermon. But it is true. I vowed a vow in my life that I will never get to a point in my life where I will be offended in God. I will never get to a point in my life where results or no results control my hunger and my love for God. No. Too small a reason. If God never blesses me in this life again, I owe him my allegiance and my love forever. Can I tell you this? You may not have anything human beings call success. Truly speaking, let me tell you, if you have Jesus, you really have everything. It's just that the world may not see it that way but you are rich in christ this is what i've learned in my little life i've seen the vanity of anything at all life is truly like a vapor five minutes without your breath you are in a coffin your estate is still standing but you are gone every other thing is still standing but you are gone gone and gone for good the lord wants to correct foundations who told you that if god does not bless you he is not god where did you learn that from whoever told you that the primary reason to serve god is so that you will get a husband and a wife and a breakthrough and a job i'm not saying it's wrong but whoever told you that god works with people based on contract lord i want to work for you but here is my condition make sure my wife comes before december make sure my husband comes before january make sure my appointment letter comes by next week except you are not god it doesn't come and goes uh-uh you've gone too far God remains God. Doesn't matter what happens. Did you hear what I said? God remains God. It doesn't matter what happens. He said, let God be true. And all men and all situations liars. Can you lift your voice where you are and say, Lord, may I never leave you for anything in this life. let nothing in this life bring me to a point where i call you unfaithful let nothing in this life bring me to a point where i have reasons to probe your integrity not my results not my failures not my limitations too small a reason you stand in majesty in a class all by yourself my results have no authorization to validate your integrity and your majesty if the church is never built you are still god if the child never comes you are still god listen to me i show you how to stand on a foundation that no power no cause no yoke can stand against that i find you faithful oh god whether i understand what is happening in my life or not i don't know why my father died i don't know why i lost my mother i don't even know why my pastor died he was coming back from a crusade why will a man of god die but i still count you faithful i don't know what to say lord you seem so far away a million miles on what it is today and though i haven't lost my faith i must confess right now that is hard for me to pray god knows you are human brothers and sisters but i don't know what to say I don't know where to start But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will see And I 
to pray Even in my darkest hour Through the sorrow and the pain I will sing And I will pray I lift my hands to honor you Because your word is true And you line up all your disappointments to be your audience and then still praise God in the midst of them can you line up the house rent line up the lack of job the lack of a child you are not dancing for a miracle it's your testimony you are telling life I am this grounded I am this grounded I am discounted. No food to eat, but I am discounted. And Satan comes to stand close to you like the wife of Job and say, Why don't you just curse God? Of what use is being a worker in the house of God when God will keep passing you and blessing strangers? When they will come for miracle service and receive and go back and you are still a worker and he's acting as if he's not seeing you. Listen. Listen. Many believers are not taught that when things don't work and you believe God, it is also faith. Faith is not only when results come. Sometimes faith is why you stand when results don't come. Listen to me. When Jesus hung upon that cross, in spite of the pain on his hand, it took strength and stamina to remain there. The pain did not leave him because he was the son of God. Because many believers have not been taught that sometimes, listen to me, that sometimes on your path to growth, the weight of what is coming on you will test your foundation. Like a farmer goes to a farm, just because you see blisters on a farmer's hand does not mean he's not healthy. It means he's hardworking. Listen to me. Let your interpretation about life and the dealings of things in your life be corrected tonight. Because there are many of you who are calling God names. Whereas heaven is clapping for you. Earth is calling you faithless. Whereas heaven is standing at an attention. And say this young lady lost four people in four months. And she's still waking up as usual to pray. Whereas some ignorant person will see you somewhere. And say where is your faith that four people are dying. Don't get me wrong. I believe in the blessings of God. But believers must be taught that the solidity, the stability of your foundation is tested when things don't work your way. And you still call him faithful. I heard of a couple, not, not a recent story, from their wedding, happy. They were on their way to the reception and a truck just came and hit them. And that's how... The husband died with his bow tie right there. It doesn't matter whether it's a curse or it's a charm or it's an arrow. He's dead. What does such a bride do? You will think people will come to comfort her until you start hearing that she's a witch. That's what people will say. Imagine adding on that precious lady's pain instead of coming to comfort her. They'll say, we've always known. This lady has killed her son. Aye. Life can be cruel. If you don't know your God and you cannot stand alone and praise him alone, if you still need a keyboard and you still need a bass guitar and you still need a music director, your foundation is small. There are times that your pain becomes a writer and it will write songs that only you can understand songs that are not supposed to make sense to anybody 
accepts you uniquely designed to praise God through your pain I told God there is nothing in life that will ever come to me that will make me look at God and say God why many people see the things that we do and they think it's because of the result god has brought today no the results did not come in one day can you love god when you don't understand him can you love god when you don't hear him were you taught that a believer is not just one who receives results sometimes a believer is one who stands not just while he's waiting for results read hebrews 11 some died without receiving the promise if you are just going to wait 30 years it will be okay but there are people who waited till they died and the bible added them and called them elders who obtained what did they obtain now because they died without receiving the promise We need to teach a generation that God is not an ATM. We need to teach a generation that God is not a politician who is just a job giver. Remember, I'm teaching on growth. There are other aspects coming. We need to teach a generation that God is not just some, some lobbyist. No. It's God. In the beginning, God. At the end of your life, if I have God, and people just look at them. When people testify and we see what they are saying they got, I got a new job. This is the certificate. We clap and we somebody will help you and roll on the ground for your own sake. But when people get say, oh, I was born again gave my life to Jesus Christ people just say oh congratulations so you go and join the queue of, and know what we are going through I love you with all my heart and I'm encouraging you if you want to stand there are many questions in your mind now the answer is what you are hearing if you really love God beyond certain levels there will be me to ask that question faithful and true faithful and true it's the reason why many preachers cannot go to funerals what are they going to say what happens when you have conducted a miracle service and right after that someone dies and you are asked to come and greet the people say pastor why did this man die god is faithful oh. even when you do not have answers god is greater god is faithful he's mighty what i go through or do not go through should never ever be a reason to question his faithfulness please sit down your foundation your foundation second timothy chapter 2 and verse 19 let's tie up this first point just the a part second timothy chapter 2 and verse 19 it says nevertheless the foundation of god does what standard nevertheless the foundation of god standard sure hmm. so when you build on christ you will stand sure growth systems i needed to just walk this out with us so that we don't get excited because of the other things that i'm going to be sharing and saying and forget the fact that if your foundation is faulty 
you know let me tell you this let me tell you this please look up honestly speaking i get hundreds of text messages every day from people you can imagine because of the nature of what i do people send me text messages from all around just requesting prayer or just letting me know the things happening around their lives and sometimes i use those text messages to gauge both the level of growth and the spiritual orientation of the people i am amazed sometimes at how how offended people can be over the matters that they think they are trusting god for a miracle for that they have not yet gotten people have sent all kinds of text messages to my phone abusing both me and god for not getting school fees see that since he's, you you can't see him the one who has clearly said is representing him you insult me and ask me to help and tell god that you insulted both of us just because school fees did not come there are people who they are panic and the text messages just because a child falls ill oh boy the text messages they write why is god doing this and that i'm a giver i'm a tighter why is he saying this and then later on maybe i'm in a meeting and you are not answering again you see this is the kind of thing i'm saying and god is not faithful and blah blah all for that solid when the shunammite woman's son died the prophet sent geazi he said go and find out from that woman this is a child that is dead already when she met gehazi say it's all well what did the woman say all is well let me just go and see the prophet is there an imagine no 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 don't worry these are people who have strong foundations what about esther hadassah i shared with you in one of the days here the king there was an emergency her man is plotting to destroy the people of god and then they are asking her should i grant anything no 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 king please take your time i just want to prepare a banquet for you can you be calm under pressure is proof of stability it's not just a proof of maturity some things are more than just age and psychology it's a reflection of no knowledge of god that my panic regardless of how i go around it makes no difference except god built a house i will labor in vain and stroll around from pillar to post so my soul find rest find rest like something that is missing and you found it find rest number two let's hurry up the excellency of your spiritual foundation is number one number two now pay attention we finish handing over everything to the lord but that's not all it takes to grow the second key if you want to grow and grow sustainably is you have to understand the cosmos please write it down an understanding of this earth and the world system you will never grow if you do not understand the world that you are living in the cosmos this social system it's not enough to understand god's kingdom alone you have to understand this world my god how many believers are ignorant of the cosmos we do not understand how this system works and so we cannot thrive and grow jesus prayed a prayer john chapter 17 we'll read a few scriptures here please pay attention and let's learn john chapter 17 we'll read from verse 15 to 7 to 21 15 to 21 please look up everyone it's projected this is the prayer of jesus how many of you know that when jesus prays it will be answered i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil not from evil from the evil 
Next verse. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. Uh huh. Sanctify them through your truth. Thy word is truth. Next verse to 21. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 20. Neither pray I for these alone. This is where you come in now. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. 21. That they may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou sent me. Jesus is praying. And he's saying that, father i'm keeping them in this system the same way i walk through this system their lives will be in the similitude of my experience in this system sanctify them separate them garrison them on the strength of your word your word is truth listen to me there are many things the bible says about this world the earth but the world the social sphere most believers may know god but they are ignorant about the world system and many times back to faulty foundations again we are taught that once you know god that's all and that's enough as important as that is you need to have intelligence over the world that you live in the bible tells us so many things about this cosmos this social system let's look at a few of them Number one, First John chapter 5, write down these scriptures. Please write all of them. Understanding the cosmos, understanding the world system as a spiritual growth system or a, a kingdom growth system. First John chapter 5 from verse 4 and 5 Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world the world again overcometh the world so the world and the system can be overcome it says and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith verse 5 who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that jesus is the son of god so the bible tells us that this system can be conquered that a man can rise above it it's an information god is giving you that regardless of how the world is you have an advantage there is a provision where the saints can rise above the grip of the world first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 first corinthians 3 and verse 18 please hmm. it's projected if you can see it please let's read together one to read let no man deceive himself uh-huh if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise let me explain to you what he's saying that means that there is a methodology there is an approach to life as defined by the cosmos are we together now and that on the strength of your understanding their way of doing things you may believe you are wise and the bible says compared to god's dimension of wisdom it is deception so it says let him become a fool it doesn't mean to be void of knowledge and understanding it means to subscribe to another system that may make you look like a fool based on god's standard so that you will be truly wise he tells you this that the system the modus operandi of the cosmos is antichrist is against the operation of the kingdom John 14 27 John 14 27 after that we'll go to first John 3 and verse 1 John 14 27 look up please another information Jesus is giving us here please look up those outside make sure you're following he says peace now he's talking of peace here I live with you my peace I give to you not as the world giveth give i unto you he says let not your heart be troubled 
neither let it be afraid that means these possibilities exist for as long as you are in this world the tendency for being perturbed and being in fear is something that will continue it will attempt to haunt you but he's saying the antidote to it is that i have routed my peace in some way and i have given it unto you my peace i give unto you first john chapter 3 and verse 1 don't be tired you are learning something first john 3 and verse 1 let's read behold what manner of love the father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of god it says therefore the world knoweth us not why because it knew him not do you know what this means god is revealing to you through apostle john that influence in the world system for a believer doesn't come easy it is difficult to be known it says the world knoweth us not they will not recognize us they, it will it will until they exhaust their options they will not easily recognize you so you can be a christian lecturer and be the best in your department and the system will continue to ignore you until you do something that makes them to not have a choice that means every believer recognized by the cosmos it is because the cosmos did not have an option this is what he's saying jesus was doing a lot of things and they refused to acknowledge it people will return back with testimonies i'm a leper look at my hands i said forget about that guy Nic nicodemus came and said rabbi we know we have been studying we have been we've taken your miracles as a case study and we know you are a man sent from god why didn't they say it in the open behold a man sent from god jesus is standing with barabbas a thief and they would allow barabbas to go and continue harassing as a capon because of how they hated jesus he's giving us an information here the information is not just that we are sons of god alone but he's telling you that influence in the cosmos if you are not born again and you refuse to subscribe to god's ways is easy So do not be surprised when you are doing a lot of great things as a believer and people refuse to acknowledge you. You are the reason why this company is rising. And when it, if they have to appreciate you, they generalize it. All the staff have been hardworking, you have been serious. But when a non-Christian is there, they isolate the person and so lavishly celebrate the person to offend you. Find comfort. He opened your eyes to see that the world knoweth us not. The word know there means approve, recognize, accredit, celebrate. James chapter 4 and verse 4. God is giving us wisdom. James 4 and verse 4. Look at me. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship, aha, uh -huh, He's giving an information. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. Whosoever will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Now, this is a, an interesting one. Don't be friends. How do you relate? Don't be friends. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. So, how do you collect your salary? How do you apply for a job? How do you go for a birthday party of a business partner who is an unbeliever, who you have to work together with? That means when a scripture looks obviously wrong, it means you have to look again. Are we together now? The idea of friendship here, listen very carefully, is not relationship. You must understand now he's not saying to not relate with the world friendship here he's talking of an attachment a fraternity with respect to your allegiance with respect to your values with respect to the government you submit to this is the context that james is talking about because as you will learn and you have learned here that everything multiplies on the basis of relationship many believers have erroneously carried this scripture 
and they have rejected every good thing in their life why because the bible talks of friendship with the world he's not saying to not love non-christians no he's not saying to not participate in non-christian activities that's not what he's saying he's talking about the fact that no matter how you relate with these people it is important for you to understand that anything that threatens your convictions your values and ultimately your allegiance to god is fighting him in your life are we together two more scriptures and then we'll tie this up first timothy chapter 6 7 and 8 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much first timothy 6 and then 7 and eight we would have started from six but no problem we'll hurry up because of time look at this apostle paul is giving us another information about this world that we need to learn what's the information read with me for we brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can carry nothing out of it now this is a very good information what is the information you brought nothing into this world and on your way out you are not carrying anything you found here out verse 8 and having food and raiment let us therewith be content now listen very carefully that means he's trying to tell you that while you interact with the cosmos that you should be able to prioritize prioritize your life in a way and manner that does not allow you forget that all of these things the cars and the houses is simply supposed to define your comfort within your stay are we together it's like renting a room in a hotel because you are there for one week if all of a sudden you get so obsessed with the activity of that hotel as if you are not going to leave again one week will clock and you did not even maximize the state the purpose of renting the apartment is to allow you either have a meeting or rest or do whatever you have to do so he's giving you here a mindset of contentment that comes from knowing it, it tries to give you the understanding of a pilgrim that nothing other than god is worth dying for are, are you getting the understanding here now yes so by the time people act as if they would die for money as if they would die for position as if they would die for this this is what they are violating we brought nothing there is no child that was born with an atm you came out from your mother's womb and said this is my atm with my name i brought it from heaven no nobody came with a key to any house nobody came with a mercedes-benz key out of his mother's womb no When you know this, you can look at certain things in life and just say, let it go. And they say, why? For I brought nothing. Mm. This is a revelation that will even help you in giving. You mean you just gave everything away? I brought nothing to this world. If I fall down and I die today, even this Bible will not follow me because it didn't come with me every story was written on earth here that means the one thing i can take out of the earth i must treasure it the one thing that i can take out hmm. believers let's not live like fools we must understand the cosmos thank god for money thank god for cars and let me tell you this do do not make a mistake of thinking i'm endorsing poverty or failure far from it this teaching was designed to cause you to grow this is how we grow by being prepared to lose things nothing in this world should so possess you that you cannot lose it that is a devil and that is a cause joshua selman the lord has a need for your car let it go oh god is yours the lord has a need for your house let it go the lord has a need for koinonia let it go the foolish man 
was a foolish rich man for one reason he forgot that he did not bring anything he built bands and said my soul find rest not in god find rest when you find rest in prosperity you are finished already when you find rest in certificates you are finished already when you find rest in ministry in power in anointing you are finished already we brought nothing to this world Please don't live your life over my dead body. This ten naira, it must come out. Except I'm not, I will wear my father till. Uh -uh. That kind of mindset is the mindset of somebody who does not understand the cosmos. When you know you brought nothing to this world, then you will also know that you must make sure that by the time you are leaving this world, you will live empty. So why are you holding on to many things? isn't it amazing that those who are really poor are the ones who are holding on to many things their hands are so full god cannot bless them most people think it's blessed people who are greedy and stingy no that you don't have the resources are proof that your hands are too full to receive from god It's those who released everything he said now give me your hand since you released everything understanding the cosmos i promised you two more scripture let's hurry up john 16 33 john 16 and 33 now this is a big one believers pay attention let's read together one to read these things i have spoken to you uh-huh that in me ye might find peace you see peace again this peace is a very serious thing in the world ye shall have tribulation you went to school what does that mean whatever it is it doesn't mean peace <laughs> are we together it doesn't matter how you want to whether it's emotional whether it's prophetic whatever it is it is certainly not peace whatever it is is the opposite of what god gave you in this world you will have tribulation he says but be of good cheer he never said be of good cheer the tribulation will not come there is a system i have provided also to help you overcome you are not you are not being cheerful just because of nothing you are being cheerful because there is a system that you can route your victory out of it tribulation i don't know what i did that people don't like me i'm a nice man of god i'm a nice business i help people oh dear welcome to the world of men listen the condition to go through tribulation is that you are alive it's not even that you are successful is that you are what alive i am amazed at how many believers fret you know i've shared with you my story years ago it used to bother me a lot every time I'm misunderstood and every time people you know don't seem to be comfortable with me I wonder and I say oh look at I'm very sincere my heart is well meaning what is all this nonsense until I land there is a heavy price for greatness let me educate you tonight my brothers and sisters if you ever believe that just because you are sincere well-meaning nice-hearted wonderful loving soft godly and then the world will have that regard for you please wake up jesus gave us this information welcome to the world he says you if you are in the world if you go out of it you don't need to worry about this so whilst you've been praying for long life and god answered you better learn what will happen while you are living long you will be amazed to see people who disregard you and will go out of their way to show you you are nothing welcome to the world of man you will be amazed to know how many people will look at your messages and say this is nonsense you will be amazed at how many people will see your sacrifice and say this is nonsense what is there in having three children what is there in being great what is there in a phd i thought you would think everybody will celebrate you in this life and love you no let me tell you believers learn this because you see 
as believers i hope am i boring you tonight please please learn this you will need it in your life you know most of us as believers we are surrounded by ourselves so there is a culture that we grow with for many years everybody is wonderful even someone who doesn't like you really likes you 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 get what i'm saying so there's nothing like anger and fight when somebody say i hate you it just means you annoyed me now we are used to that soft brotherly warmth and we take that naivety to this strange world of wolves i will we'll come to that scripture you will find out that those that are in this world are not just men there is a name god gave them wolves you study from national geographic channel what wolves can do wolves are not friends do you keep a wolf in your house if another prophet was speaking you would think maybe he drank wine like noah or this this is jesus speaking pay attention to what i'm telling you because the moment believers step out of this place you are sincere and for the first time you've been hearing that they hate people now you are seeing somebody face to face i hate you period why sir this is even why i hate you again and you call joshua selman and say what is this i thought there's anointing for favor how is it supposed to work ask mary what favor did to her was it not because of favor mary got into trouble as soon as mary was declared to be favored of god the first thing that hit her was a scandal who is the real father of this child is it a ghost or a rabbi see i'm a virgin virgin of where and the bible calls that favor listen and learn you will stand in a place where they are giving bribe everybody is bribing and you say no 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 i love jesus christ there's no collecting bribe and because of that someone will look at you face to face and say you irritate me tribulation everybody loves you because you are like them make money get a job bring a new car and dance around and say brothers and sisters this is the faithfulness of god the year of extraordinary fruitfulness we're just in may by next week you will find out that there is now a problem with your shoe there is now a problem with your worship have you been taught that everybody should not like you have you been taught that it is okay to be controversial have you been taught that just because you are not loved by all just because there are people who trivialize your value it does not mean you are valueless learn this and be strong on time before ignorance crushes you many people will give up their success because of what people are saying and it's the same people that will run and carry it and say thank you it was a strategy i was hoping you would drop it so i will pick it Do you know how many people will continue to pray for you to fail when you are successful they may not be christians they stand like the magi looking at the stars waiting for the report of your failure hi this is the world we live in you know? jesus is teaching here look at how jesus is celebrated on a crusade ground and the next thing he enters a city and people are looking at him you mean you've not had that leopard this is the guy that healed him so what i remember years ago i don't know if you can remember it, jimmy i went for a meeting in congo and that was when god really started celebrating me everybody was just discerning the grace and this thing was just walking everywhere i would go to people would celebrate me discern the grace of god and sincerely honor me and i went for a meeting in congo and i got there and the people didn't even know who the guy was really and one guy just came i remember one funny guy just came and just pushed me like that and i just stood i was looking at him he may not remember but jimmy was he looked at the guy later on he was passing a comment about it. I said, ah, can you imagine that this guy just came and was pushed it was later they said ah, that's the joshua selman who's a ah, man of god this and that and that is it not amazing that you are used to being celebrated until you get somewhere they'll say bros shift and they're like 
whereas somebody say my daddy my 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 way maker my my miracle worker you think everybody will call you king of kings until you get to places where they will not call you king of kings they will call you beelzebub and they will say it to your face if you don't know this about the world you will die of heart attack you will hate success because the burden will be too much you will say i was better off by myself hallelujah <laughs> now let me tell you the funny part there are people who will now be educated on who you are and say so what you would think people would just know that oh this is pastor alpha this one oh sorry you are the one i've been hearing say, so what well how, how, how did you bring bread for me what what did you i beg please i've had the privilege of meeting certain great men and women of god around the airport and a few times especially on my personal trips i've met with them and i've tried to look for a seat just to come and greet them and i've been surprised that some of those who were with them in maybe the lodge or wherever did not even recognize them and can push them and say everything and that person and you sometimes you can see the offense you're like ah, you don't watch tv again you don't know me i don't know you please i'm looking for my let it not surprise you my brothers and my sisters when people disregard you it is part of the things you should expect walking in the world don't carry a celebrity mindset and expect everybody to clap for you. You will meet somebody one day who will look at you and rubbish you head to toe. And if you do not have your intrinsic worth that is a derivative of who you know God has made you to be, you may not bless people again. Growth systems. Is someone growing? One last scripture. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 16. You will thank me for the things that you now learn. You will thank me sincerely. Not today. If you thank me today, you do understand what I said. You will thank me when you will need that light in the night. For many of you, this is broad daylight. Just keep it in your archives. The night will come. When you will be the youngest manager of your corporation and you will need this message you will play it again and cry and say lord thank you for preparing me behold now this one he, he now didn't say you are in the world he said i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves eat sheep they don't relate they eat sheep when wolves see a sheep they would tear it into pieces because you are a sheep also be a dove be wise as serpents harmless as doves all this is because you are a sheep oh. because you are a sheep become a snake too and become a dove this is an advice being a serpent you are not a serpent you are not a dove Borrow the quality of a serpent and a dove to make you a, an effective sheep. When a sheep must become a serpent and a dove to survive, it's a serious matter. Jesus is advising you. Hmm. I send you forth as sheep, but your being efficient as a sheep will require you to be both a serpent and a dove sila hmm. you mean i must go that far to be a sheep i must first be a serpent then i become a dove yes sir all because my enemy is a wolf so it takes being a serpent and a dove to overcome a wolf it doesn't take just knowing how to run notice that the serpent is slow the dove is fast 
all of them are required the serpent looks corny intelligent skill the dove is very innocent many times naive the purity of conscience and yet the serpent is not ignorant at all serpents don't chase you they would disguise you come near they hit you with their venom and let you to die they just watch where you die and then they slowly come to you and swallow you they make sure that they swallow you where they can hide for a long time till you digest you will never catch them you won't see the trace they don't bring blood out of you there is no trace there is no evidence other animals will eat and leave the bones you can trace it back to the mouth and catch it and say you are the one who ate this a serpent will finish you and you will not see anything there and Jesus said be it to survive whoever taught you that just because you are born again living in the cosmos will just require you to be a nice person that's why you are not promoted in your office because you are a sheep alone and you stood up before your boss and said I'm a Christian I won't collect bribe I, will, I stand for Jesus you are right but you are not a serpent you are out there was a way to have done it and you called it boldness but it was not the wisdom that was required there are many believers who have done what they believe to be zeal they have believed they have done many things that looks like standing for Christ I remember I had a friend years ago we we're on our way going to Joss very zealous funny friend and then from nowhere and they were non-christians you know what i'm talking about real fanatics in that car that can almost slaughter you in a moment and we we're somewhere there and i was just praying that we arrived safely and this my friend who is a sheep that cannot be a serpent just shouted praise the lord and then the gentleman began to teach and the way he preached he began to call you know the leader of that religion and all of that and he called this and was insulting the person and insulting and saying a lot of things ah there was silence in that car i knew i started thinking of which mystery i know what is the mystery of exemption what is what is the key how did how did how did daniel escape the lions then When you are a sheep without being a serpent and a dove, you are in trouble. Do you know at the end of it, sincerely, I tell you the truth and I lie not. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. They were almost going to pack us in a mosque to slaughter us. The driver started chanting something in anger. And someone seated in the car too started chanting in anger. It's like something you, you know what I'm talking about this is an insult this is that and he does not even understand how sir and then when he finished all that sermon he said i have a brother here who will round up with closing prayer me closing prayer <laughs> hallelujah Look up, please. Not every death is dying for Christ. Some deaths are the death of a sheep that cannot be a serpent. It took the grace of God for us to arrive just in peace. And I told myself I will never travel with this guy again. I was not afraid of death. It was you I was seeing. Who would teach you? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many missionaries should not have died except for the way they approach their sheephood? There are people who just get up and do things anyhow. Listen. You must understand the cosmos to grow.
many of us know God but we do not know this system so the diplomacy to navigate this system we do not have it everybody say understanding the world system number three our time is gone goodness I hope you are still following me the first is your foundation second is understanding the world system the third is you must understand value I will rush this we've dealt with this I want to be able to reach the fourth one understanding value please look up if you want to grow spiritually and otherwise in this world you must understand that your growth your excelling will be based on your value and your value is divided into two the first is your virtue and then second your skill if all you have is education listen carefully if all you have is certificate and you do not have character you will not rise in this kingdom there are many educated people who will never rise to managerial levels because they lack virtue they have transactable skills but they do not have virtue we have dealt with this extensively in this house so i'm not going to dwell so much maybe let's just look at two scriptures very quickly number one you know galatians 5 22 you just write that then let's read colossians chapter 3 please from verse 12 colossians chapter 3 i really want us to read put on therefore okay and then please prepare first kings 7 put on therefore look up everybody as the elect of god holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering another word for patience next verse forbearing one another these are virtues that you need to possess to be great and to sit at the zenith the pinnacle of all that god has ordained for you if any man had a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you also do ye next verse above all this put on charity the bible calls it the bond of perfectness let's stop there character many people have degrees but they lack character you must have solid character the fruit of the spirit to be able to rise there are people today who are employed because of their degrees but promoted because of their character when everybody has what you have your character is what distinguishes you it may be one of the reasons why many 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 graduates do not have jobs they have the technical skills but they don't have the character that can back it you can't trust them first kings chapter 7 from verse 13 to 14 this scripture blessed me we are now talking of value in terms of skill we'll read it together 13 and 14 everybody read and king solomon sent and fetched hiram out of tyre 14 he was a widow's son who cares but the bible is telling you something that the king sent for a man he started his life as a widow's son of the tribe of naphtali and his father was a man of tyre a worker in brass and he was filled with what wisdom and understanding and cunning to walk in all works in brass and he came to king solomon and wrought all his work he started as a widow's son but skill took him to a point where solomon said come and work for me the bible captured that information he was a widow's son his father taught him because his father was a craftsman and died 
and although a widow's son he still bailed him out now to be in the palace he didn't look for the king the king that means every king is searching you say nobody is looking for me it's not true you are not the kind they are looking for king solomon sent for hiram he said come prove your skill prove your worthiness nobody finds a skillful man with character and cannot forego any other excess to keep that person it's true many believers have character but they don't have skill character is important but it's not character that turns products into services it will take skill nobody will bring into their company to come and destroy them and the only thing you are doing is praying that's important but they didn't hire you as a prayer warrior they hired you to be productive 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 you can tell them everybody who is stealing in the store no problem but what result are you producing otherwise you follow those who stole and, and go your offense is you are not productive their offense is that they are thieves two of you the door is open for you to go listen to me competence will pay you again and again let competence be your employer give your cv to competence and it will pay you you will never go on strike once for the rest of your life mediocrity mediocrity will always produce beggars it's a deception it looks like you are there but you are not there many preachers love god but they are not skilled many business people are not skilled listen to me many career people are not skilled value your virtue your character that's important but you must be competent you want kings to eat your food you must know how to cook food for kings not men you want kings to part and i hope you know that you have not arrived until kings patronize you the proof you are successful is when you serve kings the gatekeepers of the mountains they are the ones who don't ask how much no you rise from the realm of everybody asking how much to men who say you are too useful i won't let you go all oh, that will find men and women here who desire to grow listen please do not let anybody trivialize the place of diligence and competence being skillful at something be a master at your field ministry is not for lazy people ministry is not for people who tried everything and failed and just came and just received the anointing there is a skill even in the dispensing of the anointing preaching has a skill you try it and find out how many people listen to you africa let's wake up our incompetence will continue to whip us again and again we compare ourselves with ourselves i am better than this i am better than that if you get 10 over 100 and you are the highest you still failed you are just the highest of the failures listen you must be competent from a global reference benchmark yourself globally don't benchmark yourself within your territory sometimes our territories are so mediocre we don't have to do much to be that recognized you're a businessman know your craft back and forth you're a career person tell yourself you will rise to the best the confidence that knowing a thing gives you is something only God can help you understand I've met people who know what they are doing boy there is there is an aura of favor a compelling presence that competence brings make up your mind that you will not stand at the gate of life and be chewing your finger no 
pay the price avoid premature manifestation sit down get something that even kings will give you a right hand of fellowship they will say we are great but you have seen all of us we have not seen all of you welcome they will welcome you by themselves you are a tailor so well you are a farmer farm well you are a public speaker speak well you are not the only one there and you are not going to pay yourself respect those who will hear you don't talk in a way that only you will understand are we together you are a scholar don't be lazy stretch to the zenith of your profession say i'll be competent say it competence is more than a desire you must outsource the information that give you an advantage in your field you are the best because of the scarcity of what you know don't find the things that are general find the things only few know that becomes your edge please listen to what i'm telling you i'm speaking especially to our brothers you must cause the spirit of laziness and mediocrity from your life prayer is no excuse for mediocrity mediocres in our world today are those who will beg for bread and be they are the ones who will be writing all kinds of stories about successful people because of the pain and the effect that other people's success will cause on them make up your mind i vowed a vow unto god that i will never be a preacher that will have to go back and bury my head in shame find out what it takes to excel and give your all and give your best it may take a while don't worry conquer pain in your life do not ever let pain be an interruption to your success pain does not kill burn the candles if you need to listen to me burn the candles if you need to wake up in the night if you need to buy the books take the certifications go for the trainings I can cook for who who can pay you I can sew for who I have a hotel for who a restaurant for who I'm a good preacher who can listen to you can men of God listen to you or is it only those who want to be born again I'm a keynote public speaker who can demand you so much that no price of hosting you becomes too much listen you know you are valuable when no amount placed on you becomes an inconvenience the moment people begin to compare price and you and say Kai, is this not a bit too much is proof that you have plateaued on your value step up there are people that there is no amount to host them that becomes a waste their presence is like the presence of God one hour with them you must change you will never be the same it has nothing to do your own is to just make sure you are in contact with them the excellency of the information they supply you will beat your ignorance to its knees you will think you are just going to receive one or two things oh goodness in five minutes they will they will embarrass your pride by making you see how ignorant you are when you become like such people gentiles will come to your light you hear me challenge you all the time i will never become a pastor of weak people i've taught you how to pray and know god but i want you to be successful why must they think about you when they are downsizing it's a reflection of your value be as scarce as gold the same way people queue in front of a filling station they are not complaining the pump does not talk they need the oil so much they need the foil they will stay from morning till night to fill their tanks and pay you and still tell you thank you may God make you so valuable in the name of Jesus preachers be so valuable and you will never beg for bread your blessings will come from the people you have raised you are not raising anybody there is no bread for the future 
listen to me carefully you are not raising anybody there is no bread for the future there are men of god who are recycling the same kind of knowledge those who are growing know where they are getting it from when they are blessed they will go there raise men when people complain all around and say uh, why should you know people be blessed why should a young man be blessed why should what what are you saying when you raise people they become too grateful to ignore you please listen to what i'm teaching you it's important don't sit down and ask how can i rise it is valuable people who rise when you become the delight of many do you not know there is an aura of beauty that value brings upon your life you become difficult to ignore people will overlook anything be like water ah be like cold water on a sunny day how far can you ignore that the water is not what is suffering the effect of the sun on you will make you say how much did you say it is at 150 why because it's cold you are wicked oh but you will still buy it pray in one minute and say lord make me valuable make me valuable oh god take me out of the rat race of life i need time to serve you and your purposes you are showing me the growth systems of the kingdom take me out of the realm of competition let me rise to a dimension that is incontestable lifted by your grace and lifted by understanding is someone praying god is challenging you that may be why your ministry is not growing your call is not what is in doubt it's not just an impartation you need you need to grow it's more than an impartation could that be why your business is not growing it takes more than sincerity champions are not ignorant people champions do not have little knowledge champion have the knowledge that is an endangered species make me skillful skillful hallelujah listen before i go to the last place our time is gone but please spare me a few minutes you need what i'm about to share this is the 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 highest discussion of all we are going to be discussing today before i go there let me advise you always check your result against the level you are going not against the levels available when you preach as a man of god listen to your messages again not just to be edified as a sign of humility but also to learn oh the people were following but i can discern that I, I lost them here okay next time how can i adjust i think there is a psychology to my communication i need to know when the people are tired i need to know when i've exhausted their understanding my creativity is small i need to step up on it please don't be lazy please don't be lazy in the name of jesus sit down in the name of jesus sit down get books right wake up in the night stop snoring your night away sit down and learn buy the truth sell it not god gave you phones go and download or buy apps that can help you sit down burn the candles while you pray and you will watch the gates of your destiny open unhindered by whatever kind of factor you think can hinder it i made a vow to myself that i will not be small i shouldn't stand before kings and be ashamed do your homework and you will not need to be afraid fear is for those who are not prepared a workman that needed not to be ashamed take away the shame that incompetence brings take away from your life the shame that mediocrity brings 
please receive grace to sit down and do your homework sit down and do your homework are we blessed number four the last key this is so powerful you must understand men let me take you to the world of men and teach you a few things men the fourth key to your growth is the understanding of men you must understand men as a species as an entity please listen god is giving us wisdom now luke chapter 16 the first eight verses nine really but eight we'll just stop at the first eight verses profound wisdom jesus is teaching again the rabbi no wonder he is called he's not only wise remarkably intelligent jesus is teaching us something to understand men are you ready to learn and he said unto his disciples there was a certain rich man which had a steward and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods follow the story next verse and he called him the rich man now called his steward and said unto him how is it that i hear this of thee give account of thy stewardship for thou mayest no longer be a steward he's about to lose a relationship with a wealthy man that's dangerous for him and the steward said within himself what shall i do for my lord take it away from me stewardship i cannot dig and to beg i am ashamed so what's going to be the way next verse i am resolved what to do that when i am put out of the stewardship they may receive me into their houses are we together now follow the story so he called every one of his lord's debtors unto him so you can see the kind of position he was occupying and said unto the first how much owest thou my lord six remember jesus is the one telling us this story and he said an hundred measure of oil and he said unto him take thy bill and sit down quickly and write 50. hi write what <laughs> and he said to another how much do you owe and he said a hundred measures of wheat and he said unto him take your bill and write 80. and the lord commended the unjust steward because he had done uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh i'm glad that i'm not reading from one zodiac book this is your bible you have it and the children of this world are in their generation talk to me wiser than the children of light that's the message the morale is not his approach the morale was his his idea the method was wrong the the wisdom was not how he did it the wisdom was the fortitude to understand that i'm about to lose something but i've not lost it if i have relationships so he said whatever i can do very quickly because the secret to my continuity is in the hands of men if i lose one man and i gain his friends i still have him listen carefully and he was commended as being wise his dubious attitude was not the wisdom the discernment to connect with people and use what is a representation of favor god told us what to do the moment you have opportunity use opportunity to build relationships you preserve opportunities by investing opportunities in relationships listen carefully you must understand the world of men woe betides anybody who does not understand men your wealth is stored in men your lifting 
depends on men your increase depends on men not just god if you know god and you don't know men you will still stay small understand men growth systems let me teach you three dimensions of understanding men very quickly number one learn the expected behaviors for every environment it's called the law of protocol you are learning wisdom that will change your life some of you will begin to apply it from this night every environment has a system of protocol has an expected behavior you are not qualified to remain in that environment until you study the protocol of environment you go to preach in a church learn the expected behavior you enter a house learn the expected behavior you stand before a great man who can bless you before you get to him understand the protocol many believers are ignorant of the expected behavior and they step into certain circles and step out there are preachers that have gone to certain churches to preach and they did not understand the expected behavior they preach well but they will never go back to those circles again is God blessing us in Jewish days when you came to someone's house from a long journey you were never allowed to enter with a dusty feet you would stand outside and their way of honoring you was that they had men servants who would come with water and oil and a sponge they would wash your feet and clean it with toil as a proof of honor and then you are now authorized to get into um, the place to stay it's a principle many people do not know expected behavior you meet a wealthy man and they tell you this is a millionaire and he says sir anything for the boys sorry yo. he will give you something but you lost the relationship what he gave you will finish because you just showed him that what he has is greater than him in your eyes and he said you have it and go everybody say expected behavior you can't be going for a job interview and dress as if you are going to a movie theater there is a persona there is a protocol this our ignorant generation we don't have regard for these things you're going to submit a proposal for a business that is worth 100 million naira and you enter with palms and a shirt that is a bit torn and say i'm a free person you are out no right thinking person born of a woman and trained under an intelligence system will host you i've taught you that appearance is the seed for acceptance you minimize controversy when you appear well understanding men i'm teaching you growth systems listen you must understand the diplomacy of managing greatness diplomacy is not compromise you will have the opportunity to stand near great people who will bless you who are not born again they may be vulgar in their communication they may even be sarcastic you can stand near a man as a married woman who is a wealthy um, man but has no regard for family and he can be explicit even in his talk you don't just look at him and say see i'm a child of god i'm a i'm a daughter of zion mm -mm, mm -mm. take it easy take it easy there are some times that your your answer should be with your body not your mouth your body language can speak it's very important i have one of one of the blessings that god gave me is the intelligence to understand atmosphere you must be of quick discernment to understand atmosphere i taught you this um um esther knew the right time to talk there are wives who never receive from their husbands because they don't know when to ask any time is not the right time 
me i say my mind that's how i am that's why you are, you are where you are those who say their mind have all have been receiving a lot of things unfavorable most of them there were times jesus kept quiet even when he had what to say then he would say okay he who does not have stone have sin cast the first stone there are times that jesus looks at a man and he's about to leave his crusade to follow one man jesus have you started worshiping men a centurion comes to you and you say no don't worry i know that i'm praying for the rest but i will honor you wow and yet he's no respecter of persons he looks at a short and a little man called zacchaeus who climbs a tree and has a lot of regard for his sacrifice and his honor and he says zacchaeus you have dishonored yourself too much to honor me please come down it's your house i'm going to i must reciprocate this i want to build a relationship with you there are people whose interest i must protect you represent a gate let's go your house is worth a crusade let's go and zacchaeus by himself instead of jesus on the tree saying i will see you but will you forgive this guy he said let's go to your house that honor alone made him say i will forgive these people bank people are very wise sometimes when they want to come and ask you to open an account with them and you're a big person they don't just send you a text they visit you say how are you? your birthday it was yesterday say no it was last week oh last week so how are you how is everything i mean uh, the weather is hot you are wise expected behavior by yourself you will start asking them so how is the service is beautiful we are doing absolutely well in fact there's no other time in the history of the bank that we have been this nice you say you mean it yes in fact we were hoping since you brought the issue let's talk that's why they came home and they are making it look as if it's a side talk many believers are not diplomatic there are times you don't ask by asking you ask by doing what is equivalent to asking it say after me god wants me to succeed say it god wants me to succeed my status is changing it's no more decline i'm on my way to better days oh yes god is changing everyone's story status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days no matter where your family has been prophesy it status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days master key to attracting uncommon favor please make reference to my teaching activating seasons of greatness there i teach that the key to greatness in life is favor and i teach that there are two dimensions of favor there is favor with god and favor with men the bible says and the boy jesus grew in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and men I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us. I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, 
I told us our tithing, tithing, tithing. I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men, there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it. I'm telling you, God has an agenda with us this year. Praise the Lord. God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people, but God wants to make people and families prosper. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a very serious issue in many families. And I told you this is Bethel. Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We're going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention, is diligence and mastery. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom. Now, we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God. They say, Jesus has died. He's paid all the price. He should come to me freely. You will, you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God. On the other hand, we have people who are just hustlers. They want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor. Both are wrong. Are you getting me? Diligence and mastery. Two keys. I've been challenging us last, um, I think it was last week, I did challenge us in this light again. Um, what is mastery? Mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area. Comprehensive knowledge, skill, proficiency, competence. Genesis 41, please quickly. Genesis 41 from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36. Okay, let's read very quickly. This was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh. Verse 36 says, And that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not in famine. Verse 37. The Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. Find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy. And Pharaoh said, who is the person? In other words, he threw a challenge to the entire Egypt. Can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified, if you know you are that proficient, step up. No race was mentioned. It didn't say if you are an Egyptian or if you are a Jew. 
He said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified. Pharaoh, he said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise. And because of that, verse 40: Thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting, no discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of linen and put a gold chain about his neck. 44. 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And he cried before him. Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name. And he gave unto him his wife, Asenath. And the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt. The last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now if you want the favor favor that's the reward system of the kingdom the favor of god many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access i told you that you need to get my teachings the full gospel there i give you a balanced view of the dimension of god's grace and favor because i told you every christianity that makes god absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible christianity read from genesis to revelation every time god wanted to bless a man he demanded partnership on his own part is that true it's not all up to god and it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent. To gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor. They are average. They are poor at their place of work. They are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do. Different ministers of the gospel. They want crowd. They want grace. They want fame. They want popularity. But there is no diligence. No diligence. No mastery. Right? A man of God comes to stand on stage and says, Don't worry. Don't mind what I'm saying. Just believe that the power of God will touch you. Let me tell you something. When you see a congregation gather like this, they are a mixed multitude. Not everybody is a daft. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph. So many people in Egypt. The question I always ask is. Didn't Pharaoh have a son? 
The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exalt Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500000 Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me. Influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies. To buy into your perspectives about life. When you are a man of influence, you sustain an ability that causes men to love your God, to love your principles. That's influence. The kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts. Right? And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life but I just cry and I say Lord we love you sooner or later it will affect you when there is no food in your house you will not be able to fast you see the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money uncle or auntie remember we spoke last last um, last week right dependency mentality take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent a lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. 
There's got to be more than these. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than these. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's gotta be more, gotta be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you, what you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry, you are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing. You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? Their comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. One who fought single-handedly, threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands. The Bible talked about David of the tribe of Benjamin. The Bible tells us that the Benjamites, Bible history tells us that the, the Benjamites were so, were so fine in, in throwing slings, they could diverge an arrow with a sling. So it wasn't just that the anointing came upon David to kill Goliath. The anointing came upon something he had. Are you getting what I'm saying? Here the Bible says that Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor. What did he do? 
The Bible says in verse 28, seeing the young man that he was industrious, advantageous, made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Jason. Seeing that he was industrious, he said, no, 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 no. You can't be a, a servant just like the other people. You are so proficient beyond servanthood. And I lift you. You are the head of the house of Joseph. Diligence gives God room to bless you. Mastery shuts the mouth of critics. Mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers. You make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God opened doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you, both in the church and in the secular environment, the minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song... There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth. You come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down, they say, Kai, Ken, ah, that song. And you say, really? You, you see how you are deceiving yourself? We, our standards are very small. So we, we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast. Because our standards are small. You're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Say, ah, did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12. Is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. 
The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah Katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community, you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members, more than 100 members, more than 500 members, more than 1,000 members because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us, please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months, he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy. Physically lazy. When in a hurry to show quick success. When in a hurry to show that things are working. Life is not like that. The Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will. Proverbs, Proverbs what? 10 verse 4, who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4, it says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Shiva la kura sibrania na balaba. 12 verse 11. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. He said not slothful. 
The word slothful there means laggy. You are not, you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? He said not slothful in business. Diligent, fervent, zealous in spirit. Serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord? You want to serve his body? You must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters. All of a sudden, where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. Did you know, did you know that what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches? And they will find him and not even ask, what is it? Nobody will ask whatever and say, come, we are willing to pay you. Huh? And you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say, Lord, this church, I already see my destiny. No matter what you saw in your dream, I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. 
You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly. As if it's your place. As if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around. You came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience. When your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who have paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah, 
Status is changing, it's no more decline. I'm on my way to better day. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing, it's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better day. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you. The same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best, my very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace when God anoints your ability you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared, when you are ready, then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated and I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian, but because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. 
when they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20 downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace. He will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave. You become a city that is set on a hill. That cannot. Cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word. And opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, to play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah. Is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And 
Don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Master whatever he has given you. And tonight an anointing comes on it. And I send you like the foxes of Samson. And you will step in and begin to do wonders. The pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar. I've said it again and again. That true leadership, the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders. Not maintain followers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We, make room. we reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. Shake up 
I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is what for a moment walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you without bias. They will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. insist that you must be touched this night insist that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto God tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the Lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear 
We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain Let it rain Would you open the floodgates of heaven? Let it rain, let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain, let it rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around, inside and outside, and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it, take those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. Oh, 
There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Chains break. Listen, some of you, this chains has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains. At the count of three, shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, may those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. From every chain, I break three chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains of stagnation. I break free. I listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 we invoke better the blood that speaks better things. Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters, and they will terrorize those horns. 
We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families. No matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have. I don't care what covenant you have. In the name of Jesus, therefore I speak to every foul spirit. That at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood. By the ministry of the blood. I cost you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. Of captivity, that Lord opens that gate. Hallelujah! I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. 
it will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring. But it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear, you don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, it will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now. Because they have been talking about this woman. She sees, and people have been saying she's fake. I'm saying, if this woman is fake, she will not enter this place. I guarantee you, except I'm not a man of God. Please, she's not fake. What she needs is, is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come, madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembra Mato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You are a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare, you step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's all right. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus' name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is there's Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is there is a there is somebody I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. 
She's your mother. What's wrong with her? Is this working? Please help us. She's having a problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her waist. Arthritis. You don't know. Yeah. You love God. Sleep. Yes. Very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not where it has been disturbing her for some time now. Two years now. What, what, what I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus. I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord. Praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. Come on, give it to break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? <laughs> they just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. My children are 11 in number. 11? Yes. And I have since graduated. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. 11 children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. Yes, he problem is what happened to him? It's okay. okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Uh, let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I fell sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. So, when was so many examinations. And they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, sir. So they've left you to die. Yes, sir. Cuffed out of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. 
You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire and causing the hand of wickedness over your family that embargo is lifted over your family in the name of the lord jesus christ come ma. don't worry god is touching everybody just connect to what he's doing mommy look at me please don't cry look at me just look at me i want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all the lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have been. Let me yours. Please bring out. I give him, I give him, I give him the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus, that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. 
expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jackson, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side. Please help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online. It's time for them to connect now so that we can. Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of. No, no, I'm, I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Hallelujah. 
Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Father, hear the prayers of your people in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles, supernatural jobs, supernatural liftings. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer will all flesh Blessed Lord, that every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus, my Father. As we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please 
spirit, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me. Every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level. By the weapon of the prophetic. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command those limitations broken. Human limitations. Demonic limitations. I command them broken now. I command them broken now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Mam bro, do sekete balakata. Listen. This proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down, may they uproot every trace of wickedness. May they tear down, may they uproot in the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. There are many who have been praying. Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. Mysterious prophetic encounters. May your exact assignment be revealed. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are people praying right now. All you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level. You just came to get direction. I prophesy to you. The Bible says, and ye shall hear a voice from behind. Saying, this is the way. I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God 
that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love god but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply. The same way, hear me. The same way a raven, the Bible does not tell us where it came from, but it brought bread for the prophet. I command mysteriously, may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles. I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you yeah. hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now 
I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb Mazuka parata teleka. In fact, I pray for you. Listen, not just physical barrenness, any area of your life. This is the year of the rain. And when rain falls, barrenness stops. Therefore, I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. In the name of Jesus. I command everything called dead in your life. And your family. I don't care for how long it has died. Your health, your business, your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I command resurrection right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. There are people who desire God. You desire an encounter. That's what you need. You desire an encounter. I pray for you. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. You may not understand what I'm saying. May the angel of the Lord's presence visit you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift, on your work, on your skill. May it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I just want to do an impartation. There are people who have come from different places. Please be sensitive. We are out of time. We will soon round up. But it's time to receive something. Listen. Listen, I told you there will be many impartations. Hear me. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No matter what you are doing, when the grace is not there, you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen Many of you will step into healing graces. There's no time to move one by one. But I'm going, it's one of the major assignments God gave me tonight. Please believe it. You will argue it at your own detriment. There is a cheap route. The help of God is here to lift you. The help of God is here to take you. Lift your hands, everybody. Father, I pray that in the next two minutes, let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings 
leadership anointings leadership anointings I impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 I release it to you utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance I, I release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance Zamatic alive Lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of Jesus I release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of Jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and I declare these hands that are lifted like Aaron like Joshua lifted up the hands of his servant Moses I command may those hands never go down may the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and I pray for marriages supernaturally may God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it Jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old God bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny Jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to Jesus hallelujah I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me 
passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal life into my spirit keep your hands lifted father receive these ones change them transform their lives radically I cause the power of sin from your life and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you in the name of the Lord Jesus everything that keeps drawing you to sin I curse it right now in the name of Jesus God bless you thank you for this great decision please follow the ushers the gentlemen with the jerseys they will have your details and you'll be back to your seat God bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development Lord grant me the discipline